Hello again and welcome back to another busy installment of the ABC of EVs. Today we're looking at the word regen. We see it a lot and if you're getting into the world of electric vehicles you might know a little bit about how it works but let's tell you more about regen. And no we're not talking about an installment of the Terminator movie franchise. It's nothing more complicated than putting energy back into your batteries. It makes it sound easy but let me tell you how it works. We're all about EVs here and making EVs fuss free. My name is Martin Lee. Welcome to the channel. And if you like what we do, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. So let's take it back to a really basic level because this series of videos is designed for someone getting into electric vehicles. So we're all on the same page, regen is short for regenerative braking. And we use that term around electric vehicles so much that it does get shortened quite a lot to simply regen. Sometimes you'll see it called recuperation, but it all means regenerative braking. As a simple notion, the motor that drives the car and moves you forward when you're slowing down spins in reverse and that helps slow the car down. But it also captures energy. It's able to work in the opposite direction. Rather than taking energy out of the battery to move you, it's able to send electricity back into the battery to charge it up. Now, in reality, not quite as simple, but that gives us a good grounding to start from. Let's have a deeper dive into regen right now. We're talking about using the kinetic energy of a moving vehicle and slowing it down by turning it into chemical energy stored inside the cells inside the battery. The wheels of the car are turned always by the motor. But when you lift off the accelerator and on some cars apply the brakes, then the motor turns in reverse and it acts as a generator. This generator is able to send electrical current back into the battery to be stored next time you hit the accelerator. More than a century of refinement of the electric motors and battery technology we use has led to modern EVs being able to recapture a massive amount of energy. Even early Nissan Leafs could gain 30 kilowatts and an early Tesla Model S could regen at 60 kilowatts. But newer cars are coming out that dwarf those figures. Let me give you examples. Now we know what regen is. Let's take a look at the specifics. You're thinking I'm going to talk about Tesla all the time, right? Well, well, I am, but not yet. Let's start with a dump truck. Yeah, you heard me right. The E-Dumper made the news recently because it is a gigantic 45 ton dump truck that drives up a hill to a quarry in a Swiss mountain. It drives up the hill when it's empty. Once at the top, it picks up about 65 tons of rock. Then it goes back down the hill. But going downhill, the electric motor that's just driven the wheels up the hill goes into reverse to slow it down. It slows the truck down while generating electricity. In fact, the manufacturers say that 20 descents in one day provides a surplus of 200 kilowatt hours of electricity. That's enough to drive my EV about a thousand miles. There's no point in going through every EV on the road because they're all so different. Most cars allow you to set the severity of the regen in some ways. Let me explain if you're new to EVs. Some cars have a simple heavy or soft. In other words, how quickly do you want to slow down? Other cars allow you to control the severity using these flappy paddles behind the steering wheel. I really like the way that the Hyundai and Kia cars do it as well. There's often three, four, five, sometimes six options. The, the sixth being freewheeling, if you like. Uh, but often you can pull a paddle behind the steering wheel on some of those cars and even bring yourself to a complete standstill, never using the friction brakes. So not using up your brake pads and not generating heat by using the brakes, but putting all of that energy back into the battery to bring you to a complete standstill. Newer EVs actually remember your route and can judge the regen needed. And some can use the sat nav of the journey that you've planned to again adjust the regenerative braking automatically. So now that we've looked at what regen is and some examples, let's look at the practical benefits for you and me in our EVs. Well, first up is the air that we breathe. And I'm not talking about exhaust fumes here as we've gone over look, stinky diesel so much in other videos. Friction brakes produce 
an incredible amount of fine particles that are released during braking. They're pretty nasty things to inhale, and that's cut down massively by regen braking. We've seen cars that have done hundreds of thousands of miles, and they're still on their original set of brakes because they're so good at recuperating energy and slowing the car down. Next up is money. Yeah, saving money is a real benefit of regen. This happens in two ways, recuperating energy back into the battery that you can later use to drive the car, but also cutting down on maintenance. If you're not using your friction brakes, then you haven't got to replace the pads and discs, the rotors nearly as often. It's worth remembering that regen is different between cars, and that is a lot dependent on your driving style and also the lay of the land. Let's take a worst case scenario, the commuter who has a trip to work that is all flat and mostly on motorways. Well, there'll be very little opportunity to regen. However, on the other hand, you might have a taxi driver in a very hilly city like Pittsburgh, Seattle or San Francisco. If you're driving an EV down hills in stop start traffic, then you're likely to get a lot of regen braking. And if you're charging up on a night rate, you're also saving a lot of money on your electricity bill. So folks, it's time to wrap up on the topic of regenerative braking. Now, if you're anything like me, you'll love messing around with the settings on regen, whereas my wife doesn't want to get involved with flappy paddles. She likes driving her Renault Zoe because when you put your foot on the brake pedal, the car decides whether to use the friction brakes or the motor. And so for her, she likes that behavior. Personally, I prefer having lots of settings and driving it in different ways, in different scenarios. But we want to know from you what you think about regen in the comments. Do you have an EV? How do you like to drive your car? If you don't have an EV, what do you make of it all? Is it something that ever you considered in terms of buying an EV? Well, thank you so much for watching as always. Leave us a comment below and we'll keep the conversation going. Oh, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and it tells us to make more videos just like this one. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.